All right. We have 18 players. The registration is still open. And uh, I would like to invite everybody who is still not part of this arena. Please join it. There will be special prizes. I will also have a look at your games. I will play some of the games myself. We are playing strictly the Leningrad Dutch. This is the rule. You're playing, you're supposed to play only the Leningrad Dutch. Thank you, Road to GM3000. Perfect timing, perfect timing because, because, dear viewers, we're about to start a special arena. You have perfect timing right now. The arena is about to start in exactly 20 seconds. Use the link in the description pinned on the top of the channel. Join it. And we have massive fun, super special arena with prizes. F4. I think actually the game should start with D4, F5. This is how I set this up. Let's see. Yes. <laughs> there you go, baby. All right. There you go. Enjoy the Dutch. Enjoy the Dutch. Lemmings player is like, oh no, what I'm supposed to do against the Dutch? Oh no. Oh no, the Dutch. Yeah, this is the Leningrad Dutch arena, my friends. We're only playing the Dutch. So where's my position? Hey, Lemmings player, where are you? Come on, man. No, 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 no. Okay, fine. I'm going to take it. A victory. Huge victory. There you go. There you go. Um, wait. Okay. I was afraid that something is not good with a setup. Yes, this is a very nice setup. Knight c3, d6. This is covered in the course. Now bishop g5, knight e7. The point is white wants to take it f6 and I play knight e7 to protect this. You can try to play a four, five, five club player, but I don't think you're gonna succeed. So those of you who just who just came over from Road to GM three thousand, and once again, thank you for the raid. There are special prizes in this arena, which are a free copy of the course of the Leningrad Dutch Simplified, couple of training sessions solo with me. I'm a Latvian chess grandmaster, top grandmaster right now from Latvia. And a couple of chess.com premium um, memberships. Are we allowed to play anti-Dutch? Play whatever you want. Because I already forced you to play the Dutch. I mean, you can treat it whatever you want. You can play the gambits. You can play anti-Dutch. You can play the classical Dutch. I'm not going to like you. But if you play the classical Dutch, I will understand it. But of course, you're supposed to play the Leningrad. I mean... Would be pretty bad if you would play if you would play the classical but okay i'll forgive you queen e4 okay this is interesting actually wait a sec let me think about this g6 queen c2 bishop g7 this is not in the course <laughs> this is pretty rare all right but i think i should be okay i have knight c6 bishop f5 some attacks here great dynamics good luck all You're like, you're like 900 ELO, this is perfect. You're going to find definitely some players at your rating range here. Ninety minutes. Ninety minutes of the arena. Oh wait, for some reason you don't see the timer. Why don't you see the timer? A second. Okay, I think I fixed it. All right, there we go. Let's see six. So you see, there's the timer. We have twenty three players. You can still join. One of the beautiful things of any arena, you can miss the start. Still have a lot of fun. Bishop five. I'm just playing typical to the Leningrad. I haven't opened a file. I have opened the bishop. There's some attacking ideas against the pawn on d4. All right, bishop g4. This looks very tempting. 
hit the knight on f3 and take the pawn on d4. But he might play d5. I could play e5. D takes knight e5 and have very strong bishops. So if I play bishop g4, d5. Oh, wait, there's also knight b4. Knight b4 hit with a fork. He goes knight e1. And I guess this is why I play e5. So in the course, I talk about this. That if you're playing the Leningrad Dutch, not always you have to play e5 at all costs. Here, I think it's simply the best choice. We very often leave the pawn on e7 for some dynamics. Would I consider myself to be a flank player? Hey, flirt mobile. Um, I'm not sure. I haven't really thought about it. c6. This is a very typical pawn structure in the Leningrad. Also, it opens some queen h4, queen h2, queen c4 ideas. This is a typical setup for the Leningrad. Beautiful bishops. Queen b3. He's trying to solve the problem of this pawn, so we can play queen b6. So it's difficult for him to protect this. Maybe bishop h6. I can take on b2. This pawn falls as well. Yeah, this looks really terrible for white. This would also mark my first victory in the Leningrad. The time control is 3 plus 1, in case somebody is wondering. Rook b1, let's give a check to the rook. Go here. And, uh, yeah, I don't know, maybe something like b5, b4. Yeah, this is hopeless, unfortunately, for white. So, all right. Thank you for the game. Let's maybe um, focus on somebody else's games. Let me select randomly somebody. Krakos against Forrest Gump. Okay, maybe this is already quite deep. And Gump Forrest is doing fantastic. And this is also very close to the finish. Let me try to find somebody who is who is closer. Oh, whoa, what is this? What is this? The Dutch landing rod gone wrong. <laughs> and how does Biden eat ice cream? I wish I knew. Wait, what happened here? No, 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 no. You see, this is how you do not play the Leningrad. This is the classical Dutch. This is why you have to play the Leningrad. This is not the Leningrad, my friends. It has to be G6. All right. I, I see he has 158. Okay, this looks more like it. What was the opening? G6, 92, bishop G7, F4. Okay, look at that. Very interesting setup. I think I talk about this in the course, something similar to E6, bishop B6. I think it was maybe E6, D5, B6, C5, bishop A6. If I remember. Still okay, I think. All right. Black has beautiful dynamics here. Ninety-three. I think his idea is, is to get to the pawn on d4. I don't like this ninety-three idea because the knight on d5 is really good. I wouldn't have done that. You like those trophies? They're mine. In many of those tournaments, I played the Dutch. <laughs> Definitely, definitely a lot of Dutch. All right, Queen E3, Bishop D5. All right, let me try to play myself one more Dutch. Next game. 
See whoever I get. Man ear pig. Really nice. Okay. This is not how you play the Leningrad. This is how you play the Leningrad. Dutch is not an opening, it's a motion. Okay, this is in the course, just a second. Let me try to remember what I was recommending here. Uh, this is not so popular. Just a second. Um, yeah, this uh, B3 Bishop B is quite a popular line. I mean, not, not quite a popular line, but it's quite a safe sideline. I think I was offering either A5, Knight A6, or Knight E4, E5. I'm just trying to remember which one was it. Ah, wait, I think it was knight e4. If he goes knight e2, I would play... I don't remember. Oh my goodness, I don't remember. <laughs> yeah, it's tough. I have to check this. I have to check my own course. So if I have knight a6, this is a very common idea in the Leningrad. Because the knight never goes to d7, almost never, except if this knight already is on e4. Okay, rook e1 if he wants to play e4. Now let me try to figure this out. There's always knight e4. <laughs> I think I mixed up something myself. So this is one of the common ideas, to put the knight on e4, play queen c7 or queen e8 and push e5. I just got slightly confused with the b3, bishop b2 and knight c3 in a blitz game. Is this even a threat, by the way? Because there's always bishop 5 in the end. And you know one of the beautiful things, even if you always mix up, you can always switch to the stone wall with d5. Like I think, I just did it. I can always play d5 and switch to the stone wall. But I just tried to figure out, can I go for the classical ideas? I'm still going to tend to play the Leningrad. I mean, I could play d5, of course. So d takes with c5 is bishop c3. The idea is to play knight e4. Maybe think about e5 once again. The games are unrated if somebody is concerned about their rating. Now, this is still not a threat. So maybe he wants to play e4. e4, f takes. There's always the idea to play a 4. Okay, now this is a threat. So I guess I go back. We're clearly improvising here. E4, F4, I want to play E5. Maybe D5 is a move, which leads to a different setup. F4. That is an interesting move. I like how he has played it out. Mm-hmm. Okay, I have a weakness on e7, but his king is weak. Maybe there's going to be some funny b5 ideas. This is sometimes also mentioned in the course. With b5, b4, generate ideas there. Maybe I can do it even it immediately. Oh, wait, I'm blundering something. Am I not? Like takes, takes, rookie 7 bishop a8. Some very sharp position. B4, get to the pawn. We'll see. I'm not sure actually if this is a blunder. Mm 
Can I play rook f7? I think I should. Bishop f6 is looking a bit safer. No, rook f7, I like it a bit more. So I want to play bishop b7 ASAP. Maybe I can even sacrifice the exchange with b4, take on c3, play bishop d4. You beat f5 in Dutch defense? Oh my goodness. All right, let's just play bishop b7. I mean, b4 was looking really tempting. D5. Yeah, maybe I should have went for that idea. He's playing really good so far. Check, 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 check. Should be a bit careful about the clock. Ah! Wait, I'm in time trouble. Oh, this is looking really bad. What is this? Why is it giving up pieces? Ah, uh, he forgot there's plus one second. Well, I was in a lot of trouble. Oh no, this is was not a good advertisement to the Dutch, was it? <laughs> no, actually he played real interesting. Really good game. All right, let me select another game. Well played, well played. Danny Gormley. Okay, look at that. We have a fellow grandmaster from England. So how did this game progress? A five, nine of six, e six. Yeah, I think this is one of those moments when you cannot really play the Leningrad. Okay. And now... Sunday GM is gonna make a big upset. Wow. Wonders happening here. All right, let me select somebody else. I see Eric is playing against Richie. What was the opening? Oh, yes, yes. This is covered. This is governed in the course, and I recommend to play d5. Don't engage in the gambit. So what Eric played here, this is also perfectly uh, fine. g3, f takes and g3, d5, queen d6. This is also good. Thank you, Lele, for the raid. So we have quite a few raids today. Hope you had a great stream. We have a um, huge celebration here today. Uh, because my... Chessable course, Leningrad Dutch Simplified got released today. <clears throat> so this is the current position. So we're a bit of party mode. In case you're interested to join the viewers, you can still do that. We have only 29 players. Now it's 30. Some of them already joined. There will be prizes, like a free copy of the course. And uh, on top of the the usual chess.com premium memberships i will be handling out a couple of special training sessions one versus one with me that's the prizes that to celebrate today only today
<laughs> All right, what's happening here? Ah, Richie is suffering. Team Leningrad is winning. Hey, Lemmings player, how are you doing? You were actually supposed to play against me the very first game, but you were MIA. What happened? All right. Well, play, Derek. All right, I should probably start my own next game. There we go. We're working, yeah? What do we play? We play a gambit. Yes. Let's play this Tonto. This is a not very dangerous system. Let's play bishop g5. d5 is a big mistake. No, 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 no. <laughs> In the course, I specifically say you do not play d5. Why? Because of exactly this move. This is one of the common tricks. Queen h5. Make sure you remember this. Now, not only I went back to pawn, but I get more. You see? This pawn or this pawn is falling. There's nothing you can do. There's nothing you can do. You're just down a pawn. That's actually going to cost you two pawns. So you need to be a, a bit careful. That's another pawn. Okay, we can do that as well. Uh, I don't know. All right, thank you for the game. Sorry about that. What happened to you? All right, okay, let's play g4. 9f6 pre move. Why do you pre move 9f6? Oh my goodness. All right, what is this? This is not looking really great for black, is it? How do I make this work? I guess d5. This pawn is free. It's mine. Ah, he wants to play d6, I guess. Okay, let's play knight c3. Oh my goodness, 29-49. I'm the underdog here. King of seven. What is this? Nine G four. What do you want to say about this? I'm not sure. Nine of two. I'm pretty sure I have an extra piece here. Should be winning, right? Yeah, I guess it didn't work really for black. How is everybody doing, by the way, with our learning rod? Let me play Bishop before. So the threat is if he plays knight of four, okay, he resigns. Okay, thank you for the game. Okay, that was really weird. I'm not sure what you were doing there, avid student. All right, what do we select? What do we select? Somebody, somebody, Pablo. Oh my goodness, what is this? 
What on earth is this? So much wild stuff. Knight of three, knight c6, g3. Oh, f4. F4. I've never seen this move before. Bishop g2, I'm declining this. Oh my goodness, what is this? Oh, Jesus. This is not in the course. All right, where's Lemmings player? There is the E. Dun, 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 dun. B3, Bishop G7 out of 6. Okay, this is looking pretty normal. Great stuff. And he likes to switch to the stone wall, which I guess is fine, but... I mean, I tried to not to go there. I tried not to go there if there's no really necessity to go there. Okay, let's just follow this game until the end. Do you mind playing the Classic instead of the Leningrad? How can I stop you? I can't stop you, can I now? If you feel like you want to play the Classic, I'll play the Classical. I'm just hoping you're going to choose the Leningrad and appreciate its strength. E4, I think, is just crushing here for white. Right? So Eric is losing something. Yeah, there's more. I mean, Lemmings player is still good. He's still good in these positions. Yeah, unfortunately, black is down the rook. All right, let me see. What is the current ranking? Oh, wait, I'm leading the tournament. Wait, this is not supposed to happen. Okay, I need to, I need to press on the brakes. I'm probably having an unfair advantage because I feel like I feel like I know a bit more about the Leningrad than the average player here. So I have to make it a bit slower. I mean, I was gifted the free game in the very beginning because Lemmings player did not show up. Now we are just following his game. <laughs> Nobody else knows how to play that. Oh, come on. I think I think you're doing pretty well. Not so bad. It's not so bad. All right. Uh, let me see. Let's say this game. Ah! The classical again. Okay, what were the moves? D4, ah, E6, Bishop B4, Queen D2, G3, Knight C3, Bishop G2 here, Knight C6. I see so many fans of the classical Dutch playing this. Okay, I guess it's fine. By the way, this trade, E4, F takes a 94. This is pretty okay for black because you always get to open a file for a lot of dynamics. Right, classical Simon fans, I guess. I mean, white has some pressure here. I'm not going to deny it. This is why you need a bishop on g7. Because with a bishop on g7, in these types of positions, you can press the pawn on d4. Take care, Dan. This is looking fantastic for white. Knight g5 is incoming. That's why knight f5. Although knight g5, by the way, I think is still a move. <clears throat> I think h6 was necessary. How many of you, can I ask this question? How many of you have a prior experience with the Dutch? If you are available, if you're not like super busy. Yeah, Rakit, I remember you said something that you were a classical Dutch player, right? So Pans Donkey, no. Played it once. Have a book of Simon, of course. Hey, Sledgehammer. The Grunfeld. Grunfeld. Yeah, it's going to be something different. You are an actual Dutch. 
Perfect. <laughs> I mean, I have to ask though, if you're a Dutch, do the Dutch players play the Dutch defense? Because this is one thing I've noticed exclusively in France. So many French players, they play the French defense. I don't really know how it's in Italy. Do they play the Italian game? I can guarantee you that in Latvia almost nobody plays the Latvian gambit. No, 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 we don't do that. We try to avoid it. I mean, there are some fanatics who play it. <laughs> All right. All right. This game is a bit slow, so let me maybe select another game. Many people play the London in London. Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, London is a great opening, right? All right, who do we select? Who do we select? <laughs> oh my goodness, what is this? Richie playing against Gum Forest. The Gambit. G6. Nice. This is okay. But Richie, next time you play D5, D5 takes it and Knight E4. This is what I recommend in the course. E3 is still, I guess, okay. Whoa! H5, Bishop G4, Bishop E2. There you go. There you go. This is why we like to play the Dutch Rook H5. Hey, Ganny Gormley? Or are you Danny Gormley? <laughs> this story is hard. I'm sorry. Yeah, I know. I know. Forcing you to play the Dutch, right? Oh, this is fantastic for White. So far, Gump was here playing some crazy dynamic chess. And still, still. Oh, wait. Okay, I guess it's White here is completely winning. Let's just watch it until then. Thank you, Ed. Yes, I guess this is because we have been training very hard by following our boot camps, participating in the um, club arenas. <clears throat> All right, we can assume that Gump is going to win this, right? So he has two minor pieces for the Rook, a couple of pawns, should be winning. <clears throat> Does my course have explicit sparring positions? Um, what do you mean? What do you mean? Like uh, selected certain positions that I advise you to practice? Like start from this particular position? Like play against a sparring partner? What do you mean? Um, no, I don't think so, but maybe you're going to find something useful in the Dutch Leningrad maneuvers because they feature those critical moments, those critical maneuvers. And maybe if you wish, you can spar those moments. Maybe it's going to work for you. All right. Take care, Pants, Pants Donkey. The Dutch is worth an A6, I guess you need to get a course learning player. Oh my goodness, how did this happen? Now suddenly... Wait, made in one! What? What? Richie, you lost on time? It's just a mate, no? Oh my goodness, you lost on time. <clears throat> That's gonna hurt. Although, I mean, White was completely winning before. Alright, who do we else select? Maybe black one. What the hell is happening here? Just a second. D45 gambit. This is not in the course. Knight of three, bishop d3. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Nice seat. Looks pretty weird. Really? 
Gany, really? Win H7? All right. All right, let me start my next game. I guess I'm no longer leading the tournament and I can afford to start it. There you go. There you go. There you go. Good luck. Yeah, there's still many continuations at wise disposal. 95. What is 95? Why would you do 95? I don't understand this. I mean, I'm not going to miss any Queen H5 ideas, obviously. Okay, D6. 93. <clears throat> oh, I guess this is the idea. Okay, I'm going to play the Dutch. Shift G5. So I guess you want to take it? Okay, fine. Take it. Would I recommend the Dutch as the main player for 2300 feet of players? This is a brilliant question. And I mentioned this in the very beginning of the broadcast. I was playing the Leningrad Dutch myself as the main weapon until a Grandmaster level. Is this a good idea? As the main weapon? I think you also need to think about something very solid because from uh, practice, I think you're going to find yourself in situations when you need to play, for example, for a team. You need to be a solid guy. Are you really going to play the Dutch? I mean, I don't really mind. It's a great opening. But I think there might be moments when you're looking also for something positional, right? So I think it's a smart choice. You're choosing to have one continuation to have a sharp game and one to go for the kill. So to go for the kill, you can choose the Dutch. If you feel it's enough for you, fine, you can do that. Maybe up to 2300, even 2300 plus, it's, it's going to be difficult. But you can do it, I think. But still, I would choose maybe something like super solid, rock solid. You could always play. And the Leningrad being as this extra weapon, this side weapon. Or maybe you just can make it work and just play the Leningrad and see how it works for you. Sixteen hundred just beat twenty nine hundred. Ah, <laughs> oh, wait, that's the twenty nine hundred who gifted me a piece in the opening, is it? That was pretty weird. We have some very strong sixteen hundreds here. All right, H four. Yeah, this is a typical idea, but as far as I can see, this is a free pawn, right? Okay, I'm going to take it. I mean, H4, H5 idea, of course, is one of the common motives of the all kinds of Dutch approaches. Yeah, Gani, I saw how you sacrificed your queen on H7. Was this the game? And one of the things also I talk in the course <laughs> is that um, in the course I, I explicitly mention that you always have to be careful about casting short always at all costs. Because if you castle early, then you might run into some H4, H5 indeed. So I hope I managed to explain it um, pretty clearly. D4, F5, Bishop, G5. All right, all right. Maybe we are going to get to your game. F4. Okay. I'm not sure anything is happening there. Now I think I can just cast a short because I see no danger here. G6. G6. I recommend G6. H6 is not so great. I think the practice proves that H6, G5 is uh, inferior. All right. F3. Again, I can give a check. But should I do that? I can play f4. f4 looks really nice. Let's play f4. Rip apart a position. The king is here after all. Get to the pawns. Is somebody going to pull the Leningrad in the candidates? What's the percentage? 
I think it's pretty low because the Leningrad, I think if somebody has prepared this as a surprise, then maybe in a desperate situation, like when you need to win at all costs and you're playing against d4, what do you do? You play the Dutch. Totally. I mean, I could imagine Hikaru playing this. For example, if there was like a tie break and he needed to fight for the win with black, I think Hikaru would totally play the Leningrad. If there's going to be such an opportunity, he's going to do it. All right, this is just perfect position for me. But, uh, Leningrad is like Benoni. Uh, yeah, I talked about this at the very beginning. Yeah, it, it's very sharp. Exactly, like Benoni. I agree. I agree. Queen b1, okay, b5. Try to open up the queen side. Oh, maybe this was not so great. My English on, my opinion on English Anglo Dutch. What is it, F? English Anglo Dutch. Can you be more specific? Where's he going with the king? Just go forward, I guess. Well, he's really playing well. Okay, finally I'm going to win this. All right. But it was close. It was close. It was close. It was close. All right, so where's this game? Thank you for the game, by the way. Um... Gani said Bishop G5. You did play H6. No, this is what I'm saying that you should avoid exactly because of this line. Exactly because of this. Although I think black got a great position. Or knight g4, knight a6. Bishop e6, and I think black is okay. And black is okay. Hey, Joy Fred, what do you mean? I never said that the pre-lesson is going to be for the top player. <laughs> I think I'm going to choose something randomly as well. So your chances have not become worse. At all. Alright. So what's the final position here? This is... This is the position. So at the moment we have nail 88 leading the tournament with entry six points eric is on the second place gum forest in the third and truly yours is fourth now at h5 i like this move suddenly the bishop of the fourth has to go activating the bishop on h8 materially wise it's equal the king on g4 i like this king it's a strong piece right but it's a time scramble which might decide the fate of the game here. Big, big game here. <laughs> Bishop g6 traps the rook on h7. Very nice find. Why do you why don't you like 
the Dutch Lemmings player. Did somebody beat you? Okay, I think that this is looking really convincing, although eight seconds. You know, one thing I also want to mention while we are at this. I have also done a boot camp on the Leningrad Dutch. A couple of years ago, there's the free video available on my YouTube channel. In case you're looking for it, just follow this link, exclamation mark, YouTube. Find the boot camp, which says Leningrad Dutch. Pretty obvious, right? I don't remember the number. I recorded this a couple of years ago. And it's going to give you, like, insights for free, right? If you didn't really get the idea from watching this free video, what the Leningrad, Leningrad Dutch is all about, maybe you're going to get it from, the, from that video. What the nerd is happening in this game? I just don't understand. I mean, Gany was completely winning. Now he's... Oh, my goodness. And here we go. And here we go. Now this can continue for an hour. How many Dutch speakers reside in Leningrad? I don't know. I don't know. And there goes the bishop! Okay, what's the technique of Gany Dormali? Can you checkmate with the bishop and the knight? I know this is, of course, off topic. Now is your chance to shine. Do you know the W principle? <laughs> I think he knows, but I mean, in the blitz game, it can be tricky. Ah, oh, this is crazy. So there's the very famous W principle. How do you set it up? How do you set it up? You have to checkmate white in 50 moves, otherwise it's a draw. Not so easy to get this W starting position. Five seconds, four seconds. This is probably the, the most difficult part. There you go. He shows that he knows the W. He shows it. But again, with three plus one, I mean, this is difficult. This is difficult. I don't think he's going to manage it. Yeah, it's very difficult to find with plus one second. Yeah, I mean, you're supposed to push it to the right corner, right? He loses some time. Yeah, he didn't manage it. He didn't manage it. All right. All right, who else do we follow? Maybe... Karin. Very good. Very good. Perfectly. This is as in the course. Knight of three, bishop b7, bishop d394. No. You know, here, there's this very important idea that if your opponent plays knight of three with black you want to play knight e7 oh sorry dun, 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 dun. you want to play knight e7 and play c5 this is the idea so after knight of three not bishop e7 you play knight e7 for example knight e uh, what's happening here just a second you play knight e7 and after bishop d3 you play c5 the idea is to play c4 and bishop b4 and you get a fantastic position but okay, let's follow what's happening here. By the way, I should be always looking at a position from the Black's perspective, right? <clears throat> in the meantime, we have 41 minutes left in the arena. Hope you're enjoying it so far. Lemix player says he does not like the Leningrad because he does not understand it. I hope you are enjoying it. But I would assume, of course, you need to know something about it before. Like for any any opening, in order to play it, it's a good idea that you have some background information. The Lemingrad, exactly. Yes, the video on demand will be on the channel. It's free. 
doesn't require to be a sub. I think so. I mean, the last time I checked, I have removed this. I know that some streamers do it. I know that some streamers do it. They they um they put the videos available only for the subs. I mean, not me. Everything is available. You're welcome. <laughs> you can feel your strength dropping by 600 points by just playing the Dutch. Uh, I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. Now, naturally, not everybody has the natural talent of being the Dutch player. Maybe you're not one of them. I mean, jokes aside, I mean, some players feel certain positions better than others. Yeah, this 925 is pretty strong, right? And there you go. Now it's gone. Now rook c5 because the uh, checkmate on f2 is there. Queen a5. Actually, I think black missed here rook c5. You could have taken that would be a mate. He took an automatically beat x on c5 and he dropped the pawn. Now he sees it. Now he sees it. And do I think the Dutch will suit a C4 player? You mean from the Black's perspective, Huff? I don't know. <laughs> I mean, it depends. It depends what they're looking for. And this is, again, I... I, I mentioned this, that, that the Dutch is quite an aggressive repertoire. They're going for the king's attack. If you don't mind playing such chess, totally. I mean, you should do it. But if you feel like uh, you're a bit, you know, afraid to enter a sharper game and uh, you prefer playing some positional approach, yeah, then it's going to be a bit difficult. But Leningrad very often is explosive. That's how I like to play chess. Okay, this game is still unclear. In the meantime, Neo88 is keeping his lead. And Gun Forest is right now in the second place. That's the game we're following. He's playing actually against the fifth player. Number five seeded. Okarin. Wait, what? Oh no, he's number seven here in the list. Thank you for this comment, Wanted for Blunder. I really appreciate that you brought it up. It's a good it's a good idea to practice attacking openings if you're a positional player to grow in the department. Very good, thank you. Because ultimately, I am a positional player. You maybe don't believe this, because I come from the Latvian school of chess. We have a history of amazing attacking players like Mikhail Tal, like Alexei Shurov, like Alexander Shabalov, like Alvis Vitolinch, right? We have a lot of creative players. And then there's me. And uh, from the very beginning, I've been quite a positional player. But I've been pushing myself to be a sharper player, to grow as a player, right? And that's why from the very beginning, when I was playing the Dutch, I was not always feeling it. And I was like, Sometimes even playing the Leningrad to equalize, to get the simpler games. And then at some point, I just developed as a player that I even started to enjoy these sharp, uncompromising positions much more than the positional game. So, yeah. Even if you are a positional player like me, I think you want to evolve also as a sharp player. Maybe the Leningrad Dutch. Oh, something happened here. Where's the rook? Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. A card in blonde of the rook. And playing for you, the Leningrad is, is a great choice. 
And I'm sorry, Akarin, you're playing some fantastic game here. All right, let me stop my own next game. So the moment we have 35 players, Moser, Carlson. Okay, let's play the C4 system. Don't you dare to play E6. Don't you dare. Don't you dare. No, actually D6 is in the course. D6, 97. All right. There is a prize. There are prizes. Free copy of the course for one person. Maybe even two. I'm not really sure. I'm going to think about it. A couple of private lessons for random players with me. And check the premium memberships. Hello, Jack Morris. Okay, let's play Queen C2, Long Castle. Maybe E4 somewhere. And the cheeseburger. I'm afraid that you'll have to get the cheeseburger yourself. I'm giving no cheeseburgers here. I'm afraid. I'm so sorry. Let's play something like 9h3. Maybe e3, bishop d3. Probably this bishop needs to go. Knight f4. Bishop d3. Something. I don't know. I like this move. C5 to open up the bishop. Nice choice. I guess I need to close the center. But this does open the bishop. At least I'm closing this bishop on b7. All right. Sure about that, 95. Now I get an outpost. The game is, of course, still very sharp. Maybe bishop d5, rook d5, and knight c6. Okay, look at that. I cannot take the pawn. There's bishop b2 check, of course. So how about bishop d3? With the same idea. Knight f4, bishop h7, knight g6, tactical problems in the light squares. All right. Hmm. Really hard to play one of the most difficult openings when everybody else is using assistance. I hope nobody is using the assistance. Yeah, by the way. Because one of the one of the main principles of playing online chess i probably don't really have to remind this is the fair play right every result i mean this tournament's result will be sent to fair play check anyway since they're prizes so it just it's just completely pointless if somebody is thinking that he can use any assistance it's pointless it's pointless I'm telling you this. Don't do this. Maybe I should have mentioned that in the beginning, but I think it's pretty obvious that you shouldn't do that, right? Fair play was a big topic at the conference yesterday. What do you mean, F? This uh, this uh, conference in, in Boston? Hey, Catalan Drip God. Will I play the Canadian Open this year? Uh, no. No, I played there last year. I enjoyed it. But no, I will be playing in French team chess championships, which usually is organized at the same time. And last year, I had to say no to my team so that I could travel to Canada. 
Okay, this position is really weird, but okay, whatever. It doesn't allow you to join the tournament. Maybe you need to join the club first. Try to join the club first. Sometimes this might happen. I'm not sure why. Um, have you played 10 games? Maybe that's the problem. Yes, you need to have at least 10 games played. At least 10 games. That's the rule. You could have just taken the pawn, but I gave it there. All right, thank you for the game. Who do we follow? Maybe Lamex player against Richie. <laughs> yeah you're not supposed to do this as well i mean one of the ideas of bishop g5 after knight of six you want to take an f6 play e3 knight of three and c4 and this is the reason why in the course they advocate g6 and bishop g7 first so both of you you just ignore this but okay Still, some call black got an okay position. All right, look at that. Look at that. Yeah, and suddenly black is okay. And black won. What do I think about the French defense? Now I know that a lot of French players like it. It's a it's a good defense. Why not? You can play it. And maybe, I mean, actually, there was this question. Just a sec, let me select some random game first. Um, maybe this one. <laughs> That's weird enough. Uh, there was a question in the forums. Accessible forums. Um, what do I think about playing the first move E6? Can you transpose the Dutch later? I mean, not quite to the Leningrad Dutch. But there are many players who practice the first move e6 because they play the French defense. And then, if white doesn't play e4, they switch to the classical dodge. But, I mean, it's not the same. I mean, somebody posted in the forums that you can play the so called Christmas, this Christmas tree variation, right? You can play, uh, let me just show you. So you can play uh, knight f6. Okay, let's start, for example, you can play e6, f5, knight f6, and then you play g6, bishop g7, and castle. I mean, you can do that, of course. So, And this apparently has the title of the Christmas Dutch or whatever. I mean, you can do that, but it's a pretty weird way to play it, right? Why don't you play g6 immediately? <laughs> so why do you need e6 for that? That's my logic. Yeah, e6 is... I mean... It's it's more quiet. It's more positional. But I do treat that the Leningrad is an explosive opening. Congratulations, Ben Elfini. I mean, don't take my word for granted. I mean, I'm just saying what somebody wrote in the chat. Not in the chat, but in the forums. That this E6, F5, Knight F6, G6, Bishop G7 is sort of like... A a Christmas tree. Maybe it's not the Christmas Leningrad, but it's it resembles the Christmas tree. Hmm. 
what to do when you get attacked like that with h4 h5 or k5 try to avoid it try to avoid it damn it yes <laughs> do not allow this h4 h5 maybe you want to include h6 first so that after h5 there's g5 so if you're studying the course i would focus on the gambits first Is classical Dutch my least favorite Dutch? Um, no, no. I would just say I would I would uh, phrase differently. I would say that the Leningrad Dutch is my favorite Dutch, and then depending on the occasion, I'm using either some elements of the classical Dutch or the Stonewall. So, which is the least favorite? I don't know. You choose between the Stonewall and the Classical. Both of them are the same to me. And uh, in the course, I do mention this, that sometimes you can't really do anything but to choose a really great version of the Stonewall or the Classical Dutch. Because the Leningrad, in some occasions, is not gonna work. It does not talk it does not work always it does not work against every single setup or you'll get slaughtered it's like i mean it's the same as with my kings in an attack course people were asking about my third course uh can you play it basically against everything i mean the kings in an attack and i'm saying no i mean you're gonna do that why because it's a system and it really works ideally against certain systems not against everything and the same applies for Leningrad it's not going to work against everything F3 oh, wait a second F3 C5 this is in the course let me try to remember this is a very sharp line the point is D-Dex on C5 D4 now the question is does he know what to do next yeah i mean e3 you can do that but the uh, big idea is to play e4 as far as i remember king's inn is useful in short time games i don't know i've played it in classical games as well a lot and uh, you know, now, now that we are on the topic, I would like to mention that all of my courses, the previous courses, they're on sale right now. I think I didn't mention this at all, right? So it's not only the Leningrad course, which is released today, it's everything. Everything is on sale. But there's so many sales, of course, right? But... Of course, today we are celebrating only <laughs> the Leningrad. And I do feel, uh, and this is my honest opinion, and I'm not saying this only because I have written the course. I really sincerely feel that the Leningrad has been sort of neglected. I think it deserves more attention. And it's usually like some it has something to do with the popularity. Some things become popular at some point, then they disappear, then they reappear again. So the Dutch Leningrad was more played at the highest level something like 10 years ago. Now, not so much. So I'm hoping it's going to research All right, I don't know. C4, B5, B4. Looks everything rock solid. Am I planning to make a course for white with E4? Um, Actually, right now, I'm a bit undecided what I'm going to do next because I had this original idea to write two courses for Chessable. One of them was Leningrad. The second one was King in, Kings in an Attack. I wrote them. And now I was thinking to write a book. 
about the poem play for um, the quality chess. I'm about to sign an agreement, but I'm wondering if I will have time to write uh, something else for chessable. Probably I will. Okay. <laughs> have I ever had a non-chess job? Absolutely. I only started to become a chess professional with starting age 27 and uh, I was pursuing career. I was um, working in the field of journalism, public relations, but I tell you honestly, I didn't really feel like I'm an expert of the field. I was just doing my job from nine to five. Monday to Friday, but sometimes I felt like this is not what I want to do. So I'm very happy that I, I got back to chess. Now I don't want to leave. Is there e, e4? d4? Check and take on e3. Oh, yeah, it looks very tempting. Queen g4 as well. Looks crushing. <clears throat> Beautiful bishops. Queen g3. Is there a mate? Probably not. Okay, I thought somehow I was completely winning, and now it's not so obvious. Mm. After ah, sacrifice the exchange, sort of like a monster bishops and pass pawns. Would be nice to have an aggressive e4 course. I'm gonna think about it. All right, I haven't really thought about what I'm going to do next, but um, yeah, I mean, I could do it. <laughs> That's Leningrad takes the soul of a D4 player. I like that. Okay, this should be completely winning, of course. Maybe king of six was more precise. Okay, uh, I'm committing small inaccuracies here. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Let me select uh, another game. Thank you for the game, of course, as usual. Sorry if I don't say to somebody, thank you for the game. I really mean it every single time. All right, okay, Gianni Garmali. What is this? How do you get this position? Doesn't look like a Dutch to me. There's a lot of E4 courses, yeah? Right. You know, I, I have one idea. Uh, can you hear me out? I have one idea. Since uh, I wrote my very first courses on modern chess about the anti-Sicilians, I approached Chessable back in 
20... Back in 2020, I approached Chessable and I said, I want to write, I want to write anti Sicilians for you. And they said, yeah, 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 sure, it's interesting, but listen, I mean, we have Wesley So. And I think Wesley So at the moment was writing his lifetime repertoire, uh, E4. And they said, we're not really interested at the moment, so you have to think of something else. And this is where I came up with the idea to play C4, E5. But it's been already quite a bit years, right? And I could, I could write some sort of a compilation course, like a complete anti-Sicilian for white, the modern ideas. Because I feel really, I feel really strong in this area. About the Catalan, Neo-Catalan, yeah? I mean, this is my one of my most popular videos on YouTube, the Catalan. For some reason, people like it uh, a bit more than the others. <laughs> yeah, maybe. But I would have to think how to package it. Like, probably in uh, explain it in a way so that the mostly the club level players would understand and by the way i think you also have noticed the trend right the trend on chasuble do you know what it is it is everything simply it's it's even my course simplified it's easy e4 easy cheesy d4 uh it's uh whatever was the course i already forgot simple e5 simple d5 i'm already wondering there's going to be dummies guide to e4 dummies guide to d4 uh keep it simple etc i mean this is what's dominating right now yeah yeah this is what's dominating right now and uh, also it's much easier for the authors right uh, simple stuff for the club level players and not like lifetime repertoire Cheesy E4. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. But, I mean, uh, it's a fair point, right? There's so many more club-level players. So, of course, I mean, for, for, for who do you write? Mostly, you do write for the club-level players. Because there's way more club-level players than the professionals. Maybe I'm going to write my... Nixon's repertoire for something when I feel I have already established some sort of a name, right? I could do that. All right, I'm starting my own game. I will play in the Olympiad. I will do. All right, let's play Night of Street. This is in the course. This is not in the course. You're not supposed to play like that. Yes, yes, and uh, Chessable is evolving because those uh, lifetime repertoires for 50 hours, they were quite a big thing a couple of years ago, and now, and now I think it's changing, and now it's already, I mean, a popular trend to divide these courses in smaller parts because it's very difficult for the reader to digest, yes, so I think you're going to see more and more smaller courses. And this is also why I think so, why my King's in an attack was really well uh, perceived because it's small, it's small and it's even smaller than uh, this course. And, and I, I felt that I probably want to write my next course a bit larger. So 162 lines, this might be the perfect formula that I'm not writing the lifetime repertoire. But I'm concentrating on the most important stuff and at the same time I'm making it simple to understand and at the same time I make it also interesting for the high level players. I mean, is this even possible? I don't know. We'll see. Yeah. 
it is very difficult to balance it is you know and uh very often i'm not only speaking about myself i'm probably speaking about any other author uh authors come with the best intentions like totally best and uh nobody wants to deliver a bad product right and uh and maybe sometimes you write something and it just it's not what you wanted in the end right so the same applies for the books as well no but actually i, I hope that my leningrad is going to be perceived well every author is feeling nervous every author is being very critical i was very critical of my uh, kings in an attack course because i saw the flaws where I thought I should have done that differently. But I don't have this feeling right now about the Dutch Leningrad course. So I'm very happy about it at the moment. Hooray! Linux player won again. Congratulations. So it's, oh, it's only nine minutes left. So the moment I'm ranked number four and Gump Forest is leading the tournament 52 points. It seems to be that he's going to be the winner. This is a little risky for a black. Yes, yes, Joy Prad, the video is all the difference. I wholeheartedly agree with you. And this is also the reason why the price tag is what it is. I also think so. Can I do this? I have no idea. Can he take on d5? Maybe he can. And also one of the great features why video is such a great idea is you can put it on full screen. You're sitting on a couch in your living room and you're watching the course. You're studying the course as a movie, right? You don't have to click physically the, the lines. This is a huge difference. Watching Jan Pomnish video means you want to punch your PC. Mm. I'm down a pawn, so I get I guess I kept a flag. There's always that. Let's try the queens. <laughs> I'm down a pawn, of course. Oh, no, he doesn't trade the queens. What am I going to do? Three out of 17. I'm so sorry to hear that. You had a rough time? Oh no, I blundered something. He didn't notice. I'm getting all played here. Oh, this is hilarious.
Alright. I got it. There's always the time scramble to rely upon. Alright, so where's the leader? Gun Forest. Let's check his game. Where is he? Okay. So many players like to play the classical. You didn't have a winning move? I have no idea. The guy played like a monster. All right, let me try to find Nail. Where's Nail? Where is he, by the way? Where is he, Nail? He's the play. Finally, Leningrad. Okay, let's follow this. You're welcome. Remember, I'm still going to draw the prizes at the end of the tourney, so there will be one gifted copy of the course. There will be a couple of gifted training sessions and a couple of premium chocolate memberships. How does a 10-year-old beat Magnus in the speed chest? Actually, you know, I opened Pastino Oro's Lee Chess account. And do you know how many games I saw there? Can you guess the number? I mean, guess the number. I didn't check how many games he has played on chess.com. But can you guess the number he has played on Lee Chess? A 10-year-old boy. <laughs> Come on, 200,000. No, no. That would be insane. Eighteen thousand. Eighteen thousand. Ten year old. Eighteen thousand. I have played myself there. Three? Three thousand? <laughs> he has played eighteen thousand games. It's unbelievable. And I didn't really count how many games on chess.com. Insane. Totally insane. So the question is, how do you get so good? Okay, I guess mostly it's bullet. Yes, probably mostly bullet. Probably bullet. But this is how he beat Magnus. He played 18,000 games at age 10. Unbelievable. You know, I think already after something like 50 years, we are going to get kids who are going to talk about retirement at age 12 or something like that. Okay, now I'm age 12. I'm like a veteran. And it's time for me to retire. Unbelievable. All right. So we have two minutes left. Let me select somebody else. Okay, here we go. Another game. Jumper versus Yashalomios. White appears to be much better. Now that we are almost over, can you please tell me your thoughts? How did it feel? How did it feel the Dutch? I understand it was maybe not fair to some of the players because you were like having no clue what to do in the Dutch. And those who had studied it had a better feeling for it. It was easier to play. You heard people in business retire in business before age 22. Oh, 
Yeah, I guess. I guess it's smart to do arenas based on my course material because this is also a chance for me to talk about some important stuff. You know, maybe we are going to continue this tradition that I will organize more of them, not only on the Leningrad, but also on the Khan Sicilian Kings in and attack as well. I should have done this last year. Yeah, this I realized. And you know where this idea I got from? I got it a couple of weeks ago. Maybe it was the last week even. In a chessable author meeting. There was this special meeting between authors and also some of the guys from uh, chessable and chess.com when we talk about how to become better authors. There you go. The arena is over and let me congratulate the top three finishers. Gump Forest who uh, claims the tournament in a stunning fashion with 60 points, 65 points. Neo88 is second, 42. And Danny Gormali is third. Or did I spell that? Gany Gormali, not really sure. I suspect he is English grandmaster with <laughs> slightly toying his name. So, uh, yeah, congratulations to everyone.